time since the Hamas attacks on Israel. Our next guest, Congressman Zach Nunn, sent a letter to Secretary of State Antony Blinken two weeks ago stating, my office has received outreach from several Iowans requesting evacuation assistance for U.S. citizens who reside in my district but are currently trapped in Gaza under Hamas rule. Congressman Nunn joining us now with an update. How many of your constituents are there? Uh, what's the latest? Do you think they'll get out today? Dana, Bill, thanks so much. You know, this is the challenge. We had over a dozen Iowans who were trapped in Israel. Uh, Pastor Goodwin and his family, we were able to get out almost immediately, working uh, directly as a military guy myself, having a plan to evacuate them. Gaza has been an entirely different story. I've got a, a woman in Des Moines who is a U.S. citizen, went to see ailing family members who were on their deathbed, and then got trapped in this crossfire. And now, after a terrorist attack by Hamas on Israel, has been stranded in Gaza for weeks. There's only one land crossing that's into Egypt. And the real question we have here is, has the United States State Department been in conversation with Egypt about evacuating these people? And if they have, then why haven't they informed Congress? So yesterday we saw the Biden administration take a victory lap, if you will, on evacuating Palestinians. We still have hundreds and hundreds of Americans trapped in Gaza with no plan for evacuation on where they are, how they're going to get out, and then what happens to them once they cross into the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt to be able to get back home on American soil. So the number we have right now is 400 with regard to the Americans there. Uh, here's the yeah. president. He was in Minnesota yesterday and talked about a group of 1,000. Thanks to concerted American leadership, we're in a situation where safe passage for wounded Palestinians and foreign nationals to exit Gaza has started. The American citizens are able to exit today as part of the first group of probably over a thousand. So um, a group of a thousand, we'll see how many Americans are in there. What I find interesting is that the Israeli government today, sir, is asking foreign countries if, if they could bring cruise liners to the eastern Mediterranean that could be used as hospitals to treat the wounded who come out of Gaza. If you're able to get a deal on that, that could be significant because the Egyptians helped the Israelis seal that border. They, right. I, I, it's a hard thing to say, but the Egyptians don't want Palestinians crossing into the Sinai Desert because they know it'll be their responsibility and some of them could be Hamas. Bill, I think you're absolutely correct on this. No country wants to invite Hamas into its territories. We saw what it did in Israel. We saw the just barbaric behavior. Now, what I am concerned about is that the administration not having an actual plan on what to do, particularly with the American citizens who are trapped. I was involved. I did multiple combat tours in Afghanistan. We saw the withdrawal. I lost a young corporal from my district in the failed and debauched uh, evacuation from Afghanistan. We don't want this to be Kabul 2.0 in Gaza where Americans are left behind. And so while we were able as private citizens to help get thousands of Americans out and uh, our allies from Afghanistan, this is a situation where we have two carrier strike groups in the Middle East right now evacuating Americans and being able to be able to have them, whether it's on a cruise ship or a U.S. Uh, flagship, to be able to vet who's coming out of Gaza, make sure they have the medical access that they need, but also not inadvertently allowing Hamas to pour out of the country, whether it's across the Egyptian border or potentially even the southern border of the United States, to come here if left unvetted. Congressman, both Israel and Ukraine are in need of funds, and the new speaker, Mike Johnson, has put forward an Israel-only bill. But here's the Wall Street Journal editorial board saying that the Ukraine-Israel test for U.S. democracy is this, that the Senate may be tempted to jam the House with a single bill, but the risk is ending up with nothing, which is the worst outcome. No one will remember if the aid passes as one bill or several. Is that how you see it? No, not at all. I think this is a situation where it's very clear, and uh, the speaker's done a good job on this, is that we need to have a sole source of funding directly to Israel right now to supply Iron Dome, to be able to help uh, U.S. military elements resupply. And we're going to take that money directly from overspending that came out of the IRA to fund more tax agents. This is making sure that we're not only securing our international borders, 
but we're also looking at a real responsibility here. The greatest national security threat to the United States right now isn't coming from Moscow or even Tehran. It's coming because of our massive national debt. And so we've got to make sure that we're not just spending more taxpayer dollars uh, on security without addressing the situations at home. A clean spending bill that pays for our aid to Israel, which is imperative, must also come to make sure that we're not asking U.S. taxpayers to pay more. That's what a single bill does. Look, I came to Washington to fight the headaches on both sides, and I am focused on pragmatic solutions. This is a pragmatic solution that helps our allies, but also ensures that taxpayers are on the hook for a forever conflict. Sir, thank you for your time. Uh, we'll speak again. A lot to cover. Good thank to you. Have you. Uh, Republican from Iowa. So there's roughly 238, 239 hostages. That's what we've been told. What, what he's referring to is if you've got 400 Americans there carrying a passport, mm-hmm. you don't want that number to go to 638 or 639. Right. Don't want that. And we talked to a father last hour who is waiting for his daughter and five grandchildren to come across. I think we have that sound. Yes. If we could play that here. There's a list of 400 Americans that they're posted today, she's number 115 on the list. We're on needles and pins Mm -hmm. to see whether or not she's been able to get in queue and get processed out, but we have not heard from her. Okay, so uh, we will stay in touch with John. He's been glued to Fox News, and we appreciate that. Can can you imagine being a number on a list during this war? Wow. Uh, Florida.